I am Anil Kumar. In this video, I am going to discuss how to find interest rate when future value is given to us. Now, this has been a question for many of my subscribers and viewers. Let me thank all of them for watching my videos and posting such requests. We'll take help of two examples to understand the process. So now we'll see how to calculate interest rate if future value is given to us, right? So that is how we are going to solve. That is what we are going to understand. The two examples here are future value of $5,000 after four years compounded monthly is $7,157. Determine interest rate on this investment. Second question is similar. We are given interest earned on $500 after six years compounded semi-annually is $134. You need to determine the interest rate on this investment. Correct? So these are the two questions. The future value, you can say the amount is related with the present value as a equals to p plus 1 plus i to the power of n. Now in this relation, uh, n, let me write down all the values here. So a is the future value, or you can say amount, and p is the present value. or amount, correct? Now, I and N, so they are tricky kind of. Let's look into N first. N is number of compounding periods. That is to say that if, let us say in these examples, we have compounded monthly, that means 12 times 1 per annum, right? Semi-annually means 2 times 1 times t. So basically, n will be number of times it is compounded in a year times time in years, right? So that is what n is. The value of this i is interest per annum divided by number of compounding periods. Right. Basically, we have to find interest per annum. Is it okay? So, so this value of i is interest per annum divided by number of compounding periods, right? Let's keep this in mind while we answer these questions. Okay, so let's begin with the very first one. In this particular case, we are given future value of $5,000 after four years compounded monthly is 7157. That means present value is $5,000 future value or you can say amount is equal to 7157 compounding monthly means n is 12 right that is month there are 12 months right compounded monthly so in a year 12 times is it okay so that means and time t is 4 years that means n value is 12 times 4, which is 48. Is that clear? Now, we need to find interest i. I prefer to write this interest as some special i, which is interest per annum divided by 12. Is it okay? Divide by 12. Right. So, this interest is per annum, this interest. Let's say, AI. 
i per annum is it okay so that is how i have slightly modified the formula and we are going to use logarithms to find the value so let me write down the formula once again that is to say the amount of the future value is present value times 1 plus so instead of this i i am writing amount which we need interest per annum divided by 12 in this case by 12 because compounded monthly and the exponent will be 48 right 12 times n so in this case 48 is it okay substituting the other values which are let me rewrite here which are 71 57 is the amount present value of 5000 1 plus we don't know this we need to find per annum divide by 12 over 48 is that clear now look at the steps first step is divide the amount so we have 7157 divided by 5000 that gives us 1 plus this is interest per annum divided by 12 to the power of 48 correct let's calculate this so it is 7157 divided by 5000 gives us Use four decimal places, 1.4314 equals to all this, which is 1 plus annual interest divided by 12 times 48. Now, we are going to take log both sides. Now, this is a critical step. So, we use logarithms. So, we say take logarithms. So, we are using log to the base 10 both sides. So in that case, it becomes log of 1.4314 equals to 48 times log of all this, which is 1 plus interest per annum divided by 12. Is it okay? Now we can divide this by 48. So we get log of 1.4314 divided by 48 equals to log of 1 plus interest per annum divided by 12. Let's calculate this value. I already have 1.4314 in the calculator. So I'll do log of my answer. Divide this by 48. That gives me 0 0.003245. So, so when I divide this, I get this, which is equal to log of 1 plus annual interest rate divided by 12. Now, this log is to the base 10. So, at this stage, we write it as an exponential function, right? So, now we'll convert this to exponential form. Okay. So, let me do it on this side now. So when you convert this to exponential form, it could be written as 10 to the power of all this, which is 0 0.003245. It has to be equal to 1 plus interest per annum by 12. So 10 to the power of our answer, which we have already, we get the value is 1.00749, right? That is 1 plus interest per annum by 12. So now we can take away 1, multiply by 12 to get interest per annum, right? So it is easy now, 1.00. I can round this to 75, okay? Minus 1 equals to IA by 12, right? Approximately. So which is... When you multiply this by 12, it is 12 times 0 0.0075. That is interest per annum, right? So let's do this. First, we'll take away 1. And then we're going to multiply this by 12. So what you get here is 0 0.0899 is interest per annum, which is 0 0.09 interest per annum, or we can say interest per annum is 9%. Is it okay? So we got our answer as 
परसेंट पर एन एम इज द इंटरेस्ट रेट सो इंटरेस्ट पर एन एम सो दिस आई इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दैट आई दैट आई इज ओवर कंपाउंडेड पीरियड दिस इज वॉट वी नीड टू फाइंड इंटरेस्ट पर एन एम सो आई होप द स्टेप्स आर एब्सोलूटली क्लियर राइट सो गो थ्रू दीज स्टेप्स अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट एंड नाउ हेयर इज अ क्वेश्चन फॉर यू टू प्रैक्टिस now here is the second example let us try to understand each and every step once again question is interest earned on $500 after 6 years compounded semi annually is $134 determine the interest rate on this investment so when we say interest rate we mean interest per annum right so i write ia like this okay what are we given we are given the principal amount or the present value as $500 right we are given the interest earned as $134 that makes the future value amount a as addition of these two when you add you get $634 correct so so that becomes the the value a now we are also given semi annual semi annual means number of times you are compounding is 2 per annum right so the value of n will be 6 years so 6 years times 2 which is 12 since time t is 2 years so n is 6 now what is i i will be interest per annum divided by 2 okay so that means now we have the formula which is a future value is present value times 1 plus i to the power of n right this is what substituting these values we get 634 equals to 500 times 1 plus instead of i i am writing interest per annum divided by 2 and this n i am replacing by 2 times 6 which is 12 does make sense to you right so that is the basic formula so first step here is to divide 634 by 500 so we have 634 divided by 500 equals to 1 plus interest per annum divided by 2 to the power of 12 second step is to take log both sides so when you take log both sides you get log of this number 634 over 500 here you get 12 times log of 1 plus interest per annum divided by 2 now you divide by 12 right so you get log of 634 over 500 now everything all this gets divided by 12 so that is log of 1 plus interest per annum divided by 2 steps are clear right now when we say log it is to the base 10 so you could write it in exponential form as 10 to the power of all this which is uh which is log of 634 i mean 634 over 500 and everything divided by 12 right so when we write 10 to the power of this this becomes 1 plus interest per annum divided by 2 now you have to take away 1 from here multiply by 2 okay so you get 10 to the power of all this 634 over 500 Now this value, whatever you get, has to be divided by twelve, and then from here you take away one to get the value of interest per annum divided by two. So you get your formula from here, right? So once I write the formula, it will be very clear to you. Interest per annum is equals to two times. 10 to the power of all this 10 to the power of log of in this case future value 
over present value. Do you see that? Divided by 12. That is the compounding period. Take away 1. That's it. That should give you the interest rate per annum, right? So let's calculate this. So we'll start with the inside function, okay? So let's do 10 to the power of, let's put bracket here, this exponent, uh, log of all this, log 634 divided by 500. Now all this will be divided by 12. Once you calculate this, correct? Once you cal let's calculate this. We'll take away 1, so minus 1. And after that, we multiply this by 2. So what you get here is 0 0.0399. Okay. So interest per annum is 0 0.04, right? which is 4%. Do you see that? So in this case, interest per annum is 4%. So our answer is, it is 4% per annum, per, per year. So I hope these steps are absolutely clear, right? So the idea is to rearrange the given formula. First step being take log after you divide A by P, right? And then you take log on both sides, correct? And then use the exponential form. So I hope that is clear, right? So let's get back to our formula. So with these two examples, let's summarize. So basically what you do here is you divide A by P, right? You divide A by P, take log of this. So when you take log of this, it becomes N over all this, right? So you divide all this by N. So it is 1 over N, correct? Now that gives you log of 1 plus I, I am writing as annum over compounding period capital. Does make sense to you? Now after this, change it to exponential forms. So now change to exponential form. So convert to exponential form. And then solve for interest per n. Is that clear? So these are the steps to be applied. So go through these two examples once again. If you have doubts, put as remarks. Let's see how to solve them. I hope that makes sense. Feel free to write your comments and share your views. Thanks for watching and all the best.